Imagine getting your first data science job without even applying for it, especially when you come from a non-technical background. That's exactly what happened to me, and that unconventional first step put me on track to roles at Coursera and now Twitch or Amazon, where I earned five times my previous salary. In this video, I'll share the exact method that completely changed my career trajectory, and more importantly, how you can apply these same principles to your own job search in data science or machine learning, or really any field. My path to that first data science job was anything but traditional. I dropped out of high school after 10th grade, went to community college to study art and business, I, you know, unsurprisingly wanted to be a tattoo artist, but then I pivoted to political science. After graduation, I bounced between nonprofits and political campaigns, and then I spent about four years at a small jewelry company. When it was time for a change, I pursued a master's in public policy, honestly because I didn't know what else to do with my life. That's where I discovered data science and machine learning, shifting my focus from policy research to social data science. During my program, I was terrified about job prospects, but I figured out a system that worked doing some obvious things and some not so obvious ones that made all the difference. At first, I did what everyone does. I applied through job boards. But the reality is, a public policy student isn't exactly the most competitive applicant in a sea of technical resumes. So I tried something different, direct outreach. I was living in Berlin at the time, and I made a list of every company I could find that was either focused on data science or was likely to have a data science team. Then I sent cold emails explaining who I was and that I was looking for an internship or entry-level data science job. The results? Almost everyone ignored me. One or two declined politely, but one company invited me to interview where I performed well enough to land a student data scientist position, which is essentially a paid internship in Germany. After graduation, I stayed on as a junior data scientist, which was the launching pad for my later roles at Coursera and now Amazon. Here's the critical part. This position didn't even exist when I reached out. They created it because I took initiative. In my career coaching work now, this technique succeeds more than any other. The math just doesn't work when you're competing with a thousand plus applicants you need a way to stand out. Before I dive into outreach tactics, landing an interview is just the first step. If I had truly been as unqualified as I looked on paper, I wouldn't have gotten that first job no matter what I did. I took skill development really seriously. Yes, I studied relevant subjects in school like machine learning, statistics, and NLP, but academia doesn't teach you everything you need. Many practical skills require more practice than you'll get in formal education. SQL is the perfect example. It's crucial for passing coding interviews and working professionally, but it requires significant practice. I used Udemy courses, which were fine, but didn't provide enough hands-on practice for me. Knowing what I know now, I'd learn from an interactive platform like today's sponsor, LearnSQL.com. LearnSQL.com has trained over 1.5 million users since 2016, offering 70 plus interactive courses across various SQL dialects. Their learning by doing approach is highly personalized. You can start with their assessment test for tailored recommendations based on your current level. Beginners can follow the SQL from A to Z track, covering everything from basics to advanced topics, and more experienced users can learn advanced concepts like window functions, recursive queries, and CTEs, or even jump into specialized courses for specific roles or industries like marketing and healthcare. What makes it ideal for aspiring data scientists is their SQL for data analysis track, teaching everything from basic queries to complex techniques that transform how you handle data sets. Each course includes interactive exercises with immediate feedback, plus helpful resources like SQL cheat sheets and solutions to common database problems. If you want to keep leveling up throughout your career, consider the All Forever SQL package that grants you access to all current and future courses. Every course comes with a free trial, so you can explore how everything works before you commit. Definitely check it out if you're preparing for a career in data science. Thanks again to LearnSQL.com for sponsoring this video. Now back to landing those interviews. You might already have target companies in mind and you can approach them whether they have job postings or not, but it's often logical to start with companies that are actively hiring, even if you don't plan to apply conventionally. I recommend a breadth first expectation value approach. So first, cast a wide net and save any job posting that seems remotely plausible for your skill level. Then prioritize based on expectation value, how likely you are to get the job, multiplied by how good it would be if you got it. So for example, you find a health tech startup role that seems perfect, but they want three years of experience and you only have one. You still rank it high because you're passionate about their mission. Conversely, there's a fintech company where you meet all the qualifications, but you aren't excited about the product. You rank that high too because you have a strong chance of getting an interview, and every interview is practice, even if you don't decide to take the role. Spend the most time directly reaching out to high value targets, and then just standard apply, normal job boards, you know the deal, to the rest. So who exactly should you reach out to? While recruiters might seem obvious, hiring managers often yield better results. Here's a step-by-step -step process. 
First, find the role you want. Then look up the company on LinkedIn and visit their company page. Click People to see employees and target the right person depending on the company size if it's not immediately obvious who the hiring manager would be. So for companies under 20 people, often the CEO is directly hiring. If companies have between 20 and 100 people, you might want to look for a VP of engineering or a CTO. And at larger companies, you're going to want to target a director of data or similar roles. Sometimes individual contributors, like regular data scientists, are actually more responsive than managers. I've seen mentees succeed by connecting with the data scientist who later introduced them to their manager. One crucial note, don't apply through a job board and then cold email someone at the same company. This signals that you're kind of trying to circumvent their process. Really, cold email should stand alone, creating the impression, I am a talented person with options, but your company caught my eye. I'm interested enough to reach out directly to learn more. Now let's talk about the actual message. I've found that a good cold message gets a response about 20 to 30% of the time, which is actually pretty incredible when you think about it. Here's an actual cold email that landed a mentee at an organization I mentor for an interview at a Y Combinator backed robotics company. Subject, data science role at XYZ Robotics. Hi Ron. I've been following XYZ Robotics for a while, and I've found your Medium articles very interesting. They provide a clear understanding of how XYZ Robotics is tackling the problems that the autonomous vehicle industry is currently facing. Particularly, your explanation for not including LiDAR in your systems is a good reminder of why you select the tool based on the problem you're solving, rather than the other way around. I'm fascinated by your idea of one step at a time problem solving, and I would love to talk about what I can offer to your mission. For some context on myself, I'm a machine learning researcher with experience in signal and image processing. I've been working on the problem of brainwave classification using convolutional neural networks, where I achieved a 124% performance improvement over traditional methods. This research has allowed me to keep myself updated on the CNN and computer vision literature. I'm also part of a data science mentorship program in which I've been working on achieving state-of-the-art performance for music genre classification with a machine learning scientist at Amazon. I've attached my resume, which provides a more in-depth view of my qualification and experience. I'm excited to take the skills and knowledge I have and apply them to help make safe autonomous trucks a reality. If it makes sense to talk, I would love to chat further about how my skills and interests might fit into your team. Best Bob, and then a link to bobmentee.com and their LinkedIn. So here's what makes this message successful. It opens with a specific reference to the recipient's content, showing genuine interest. It highlights relevant experience with quantifiable achievements. It connects the sender's background directly to the company's needs. It includes a clear call to action with the phrase, if it makes sense to talk, which kind of puts the ball in their court. And the signature includes a personal website and LinkedIn for easy reference. Compare this to an ineffective email like, Dear hiring manager, I'm writing to express interest in your data scientist position. I have attached my resume. I am a hard worker and fast learner. Thank you for your consideration. The difference is obvious. One feels personal and thoughtful, the other feels like it was sent to 100 companies. Another approach to avoid. Hi, I saw on LinkedIn that you're hiring for a data role. I'm desperate to break into the field and would really appreciate if you could help me out. I know you must be really busy, but I just need 15 minutes of your time. I don't have much experience yet, but I'm willing to work for lower pay to get my foot in the door. This comes across as needy and doesn't focus on the value that you can provide. Remember, it's about what you can do for them, not what they can do for you, unfortunately. As you reach out, track who you've connected with and when. The follow-up is absolutely essential, and it's where most people drop the ball. About half of my positive responses came from follow-up emails, not initial outreach. Here's my approach. If I don't hear back within two to three business days, I send one brief, non-pushy follow-up. So it could be something like, Hi Name, I wanted to follow up on my previous message in case it got buried in your inbox. I'm still very interested in discussing how my skills in relevant skill might benefit your team. That's it. If you don't hear back after one follow-up, move on. But just because one person at a company doesn't respond doesn't mean you can't try someone else at the same company. Maybe you're convinced this could work, but sending these emails feels really intimidating. What helped me push through that was realizing that hiring managers actually want to hear from good candidates. Their job is to build great teams, and they're actively looking for people. You are helping them by reaching out. Having a simple system helps too. Every morning, research one company, find the right person, and send one really good message. Focus on quality over quantity. And honestly, the worst outcome is nothing. They ignore you. That's it. But the potential upside is enormous. My cold email to that Berlin company eventually led to a career that multiplied my previous salary by five times. Pushing through that initial discomfort is absolutely worth it. Okay, so you've sent your email, received a response, and scheduled a call. This is where all your preparation pays off. Before any call, spend an hour at least on researching not just the company, but the specific person you're talking to. Review their LinkedIn posts, read their articles, and understand their focus within the company. Come prepared with three categories of questions. Questions about the role, like what are the most pressing problems this position would help solve? Questions about the team, for example, 
What's the balance between exploratory work and productionizing models? And about the company's approach to data. Something like, what data infrastructure challenges are you currently facing? These questions demonstrate that you're already thinking like a team member. During the conversation, find natural ways to highlight your talents and expertise. For example, if they mention something positive about company culture, later circle back with, when you mentioned the focus on autonomy earlier, that really resonated with me because... Dot, dot, dot. This subtly reframes the conversation around why you're a good fit. If things are going well, don't hesitate to directly ask. Based on what we've discussed, do you think I'd be a good fit for this role? If they say yes, follow up with, is there a formal application process I should follow or would you be able to refer me directly? So there you have it, the exact process I used to get my first data science job without even applying and how I've helped many mentees do the same. It takes much more effort than just submitting an application online, but the results speak for themselves. Remember, in a competitive field like data science, especially in the current job market, the standard approach gets standard results. If you wanna stand out, you need to take a different path. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos on breaking into data science and advancing in your career. Drop a comment below if you have any questions about this approach. Thanks for watching and good luck on your job search.